but it was back when I lived in, uh, in my hometown, Spring, Texas, and there was just something about having like at least one pair of those Doc Martens that, <laughs> that made me feel like I was somehow fitting in. As I grew older, my shoe taste started to adapt and, and change into being a little bit more eclectic to reflect the individual that I am and that I was becoming. About a year and a half ago, I started a new job um, as an art therapist for cancer patients at a hospital in Royal Oak. And uh, it was one of my first days there, and I walk into a patient's room. It's dark and quiet, and the patient is alone. And I say, hello, I'm Shazia. Would you be interested in doing some art making to maybe like express how you're feeling or to you know, just relax. And the patient said, uh, you know, I'm just really not feeling up to making anything right now, but I just want you to know that seeing your shoes completely brightened my day. <laughs> and so I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And this would happen frequently, like at work and actually even like among strangers as I was like walking just randomly on the street. And so, so this would actually, it felt really good. It made me feel really happy to get that kind of reaction because for me, like seeing people smile and making people happy is the most important thing to me. About a year ago, I put on a fabulous pair of shoes and I prepared for a day trip to Ann Arbor. So I'm in Ann Arbor at, um, in Carytown. You know where Carytown is? It's, it's like Ann Arbor. Um, Ann Arbor's Carytown. And so I'm actually about to walk towards Zingerman's. So I, I'm crossing a street and I'm actually holding my two year old son's hand. So, you know, we're walking, we're at the middle of the street, uh, the crosswalk, and there's actually a man. He's like, you know, kind of walking towards the other side. And, you know, as we're walking, all of a sudden, my son, he, he's really little, like, he actually stumbled. And so I looked down because you know, he needed my help. And all of a sudden, this man who's passing by, he's right next to me at this point, he starts cursing. He starts cursing at me and my two-year-old son, anti-Muslim and anti-Islam profanities. And I scoop up my son and I just run. <laughs> I run, I don't look behind, I don't see who this man is. I don't look behind, I just run. And I go straight into Zingerman's. So I'm in Zingerman's and I just look around me and you know I look at the people who are standing in line with me and I just like wonder to myself like I wonder if there's anyone else you know who hates me like without even knowing me at all and I look down at my shoes and I think you know what's the point you know what's the point you know the whole purpose of doing this, of wearing these shoes every day, is you know to make people happy. And but the thing is that it's not making everyone happy. There's people that you know. What's the point when there's people who, when they see me, like all they feel is hate. So my religion, Islam, it's always taught me that. It's so important to make 70 excuses for people. So over the next few days, I made excuses for this man. I kept making excuses and excuses until I felt so sad for him. Because obviously he must be going through something terrible in his life to then displace that anger on me and my two-year-old son. If only he knew that I'm actually a therapist and I could help him work through, identify and work through those issues. Because that's who I am. I'm somebody who helps people and nobody can take that away from me. A few 
weeks ago. I was walking around in uh, downtown Birmingham with my now three-year-old son. So again, I'm holding his hand and walking. He likes to walk. He doesn't want to be in a stroller. He has to just walk himself. So uh, we are about to cross the street to my favorite tea shop in downtown. And as we're about to cross the street, there's a woman who actually, I hear her from right behind me. She comes like right up to my ear and says, get out. And then she just scurries really fast away, making sure that I don't see her face. And I just feel really sad for her. And then I hope. I start hoping that she opens her eyes and her heart to get the help that she needs. And I think this to myself, as I proudly walk across the street, wearing actually these shoes, wearing these shoes. And these shoes actually, they are, they're originally black, just dark black shoes. And I added color to them and sparkle. My, <laughs> my sparkle, which I know that not everybody wants, but it will always be there until I take my last breath for anyone, no matter what.